Okay, great. Uh, I will go into a fast pace uh, then because we already lost uh, some some time uh, there. Um, yeah, so I really liked what was said at the last presentation, right? So technology is going to be a solver, and that's that's what we really believe. Uh, you know, our mission as White Linus and and Packrant is actually to try to supply technology for everybody. So really, and for everybody, we mean you know for all genders, for all. Uh, nationalities, et cetera, et cetera, for all roles. Uh, we are uh, actually a, um, a tech company with more than 50% uh, female um, employees, and also uh, the leadership is 50% uh, female, and, and we are also 50% actually non-Dutch. So we're, we're quite proud of that. But um, actually, if we, we, we're not only talking about our team when we, when we say, uh, you know, we, we want technology to be available for everybody. Because what we really fundamentally believe in is that if we put our brains as humans to work, if we take the knowledge and the logic and everything we have, and we put that inside computers and we start using this in a, in a, in a sense that, and, uh, that it makes sense and start sharing this, that actually we can create a better world, right? And uh, I think it was already mentioned, sustainability. Now, I don't know a lot about trees and about uh, wood construction and these kind of things, but I do know a lot about technology and that's something that, you know, it's our mission to actually share this with, with others. And, you know, I wanted today, I want to talk about uh, what is beyond uh, uh, BIM. And maybe that sounds a bit strange because, you know, uh, I think large parts of the construction industry are, are actually still adopting BIM, but but we, we are a little bit, I think, ahead of, of everybody. And I would really like to inspire you also with, with some of our thinking. And I hope that this also means that you guys um, uh, think a little bit about what, what it means to you. So when I talk about BIM, maybe I need to make this clear, you know, and then now I'm talking about, you know, let's say if we're building a physical object and I just took one that I, I've been involved in in the past. So this is a UN Studio building. Um, so this is a building that you, you want to build this. This is the end result, right, of what we want to build. But how to get there is usually in these ways to, through, let's say, kind of like a digital twin, right? So we first virtually construct what later on we want to build, right? And and that's our desire. So we try to first virtually make it and 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 and, and see what what it actually turns into before constructing it so that we don't make mistakes when we are on site and hopefully this this helps us and and you know i i, I now loosely call let's say this digital side the digital twin so let's say we could say that the building information modeling process actually is taking the digital twin towards its physical twin right so it's actually kind of like and those two are, 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 are it's going two ways but it's so one way is actually to do this construction um and this is really great we're going to this is technology that has been around for about 30 years now i hope that everybody is really adopting it or has already adopted it it contains really detailed information about what we need to construct but there is a bit of a problem with it and the problem is you know, where is actually the design information, right? So we do have all the information in it that of what we want to build and how it's specified and all the objects and everything. But why is it actually there, right? And so and that's all loosely coupled, right? There, there's th that information is in other places usually, very often in in all kinds of folders filled with paper still. Um, we think that there is a solution to this, and that's parametrics, right? And so the parametric BIM, we feel, is a way that actually, as engineers and designers, you can describe logic in a, in a virtual way and test it out, but also keep it connected to, in the end, the building um, that you're going to construct. And that way, you're actually kind of recording your design logic. And that's important, because if, in the end, you want to build, let's say, these digital assets, you know, these digital twins that everybody is talking about, you need to have that in all the information and not just uh, the information, you know, that of the thing that we wanted to construct. We also need to know why it is there. Well, the other thing is, of course, that these days we want to go file to factory, right? So why would we manually construct something if we already have a virtual model and we could, without any mistakes, try to digitally construct it? So I just took uh, one of our clients in Easters, and it's just a simple model of, let's say, uh, staircases. 
Um, but you know what they try to do is to kind of create a single source of truth around, let's say, what I would call, let's say, let's, this kind of parametric BIM model. And in this case, it's actually a parametric BIM model that you can find online because you can buy their staircases online. And you just kind of configure the staircase to your needs. You just enter all the parameters. And in that way, you can virtually test it. You, you even you know, get uh, it to, to see it and you, you get what, what kind of price it gets. And then we go to completely digital construction, right? So we go, we basically in a factory, we 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 generate all the information for the machines, and then we make it, and it's a one-to-one -one copy of what you actually digitally made, right? And I think that around a single source of truth, so what we call file to factory, is also really important. And you know, this is kind of like a simple example of, of, of a steel staircase, but now with these days with 3D printing. And we're involved with a lot of kind of like uh, concrete printing and all kinds of also other large scale printing. Uh, printing, uh, for instance, this is very exciting that this is happening, right? Um, and this is all a way to actually get from, let's say, um, yeah, this, you know, from this virtual model to the physical world. But we could actually also turn it around, and I think that is also interesting that the, the digital twin also works the other way around. That's also what you see a lot in. Um, in let's say kind of like the the reality of of, of the industry, right? Um, and that is sensors. So what you can do these days these days also do is that you tie to your physical object, you tie sensors uh, or you instrument them, and then you feed that back into digital platforms. And if you get all that knowledge together, you get a really rich digital twin from which you can learn. But it's kind of like the, the BIM model the other way around. The, the disadvantage of the traditional BIM software only is, is that it's it's all loosely coupled. And I think this new kind of like platform-based, cloud-based uh, type of working is actually uh, giving us a way that you can keep it all together in, in, in a place so that it becomes this really rich source from which we can learn for future iterations. So I'm showing you the digital twin and the physical twin. So they're kind of brother sister, right? But there's this big gap. And I also already in the titles put, but yeah, it's it's a bit silly to only talk about the object that we're constructing, right? There's more. But actually what we feel it's really important that we start talking about in the construction industry about digital triplets, because the digital twin and its physical twin are not important only, but also the environment, you know, like a building or, you know, any piece of infrastructure, it sits in an environment. And also to have that data, but also sensors from the environment already there means that you have already a lot of information to base things on. And the cool thing is that if we have this, we can really go and play nice games for, for all kinds of things like, like property development, right? And, um, so what we can do is, for instance, say, okay, we have this environment. Let's, from an app store, start virtually constructing buildings, right? And and seeing straight away what uh, what the impact is on the environment, but also on what do they do they cost, what will they bring? Um, and this is completely parametric. You can you can vary uh, stuff, you can play around with it, and immediately see the impact. And these days, we more and more are approaching. The, the point that we have this computational power available to actually do this. And not only we can, oh, I need to press play here. Um, we, we cannot only do this, let's say, to, to analyze the building, but we can also analyze the environment around it. So in this case, and probably I need to speed this up a little bit uh, so that it, oh, this is actually the previous movie, sorry about that. Uh, what you see here is actually, I will speed it up a little bit more, is but actually that we're analyzing actually this building and also what we're analyzing the impact of the environment now on the building. So we're doing actually daylight analysis here, but you could also do just as well do shadow analysis on the environment, for instance. So this becomes like this game between what you're going to construct and the existing environment all in a, in a kind of a digital way. I just really want to quickly just with, with, with you only reflect on the BIM process, right? So earlier on, the traditional BIM process, I already told you, like we're lacking this design information. Um, but there is something else, you know, actually what we're doing is a bit strange because what we're doing throughout the stages of, let's say, designing, engineering, manufacturing, constructing, et cetera, we're adding information to the BIM model. So design information, and we're putting engineering information in there, and we're putting, 
um, all kinds of parts in there, like for manufacturing, more parts, and we put even more, uh, we need to put even more parts in and more parts, right? So, and this is really, we're filling up this BIM model with all this, with all this knowledge. And then once we have constructed it, we might actually start recording this information uh, that we ha obtained during construction and, and also uh, during its, uh, its life cycle and put it in the facility management BIM. Well, great. But are we actually learning from this? But also, is it it's a bit silly if we look to our industry that we're putting all this information on a project by project basis here? Why wouldn't we turn it around? Why do we not have this information available, all this knowledge and all this logic we have from advisors, for instance, like structural advisors or building physics people or the architect? Why can't we put that into a model? And that's what we're trying to do with our platform. Why can't we put all those parts and all the knowledge that those that those suppliers have? Why don't we put that in the beginning of the process? But we have to turn around the process by actually creating kind of like these digital knowledge services um, that we're that that actually are part of the design already from day one and not the other way around. Um, and I call this like factory to file. So we're actually from file to factory, we're going from factory to file because actually what we're doing is we're going to model what the factory can make and then actually exposing this to the designers. And then within a few seconds, we can actually generate the BIM model. And actually we can even feed back all the information from the sensors also into this model. So next time we actually make a smarter, uh, a smarter model uh, or a smarter building uh, um, uh, uh, when we uh, when we construct it again, right? or we do a ne next iteration of what we do. So technology for everyone. Uh, I hope that uh, Wouter will allow me just a few more seconds. But um, you know, like, how are we going to achieve this? Well, we really believe in Legos, right? Because do we need programmers for this? Well, we don't really believe that you need programmers for this because programmers are expensive and they take a lot of uh, time and, and, and it's, it's very complex. But why if we could as an industry do this ourselves without uh, programs? And we think that digital Legos allows us to do that combined with an app store. So you need an app store basically to actually share all this knowledge and maybe sell it to each other but uh, to actually uh, make sure that that those services and what we uh, that you that you can you can you can connect them together and what we what we use for this is is visual programming so not textual programming but we do something that is very similar to excel so it's actually uh, i always say like what you see on the left and on the right is almost the same it's it lo does it looks a little bit different but if the mechanisms are are kind of the same so the one is grasshopper and actually the other is excel so almost any an engineer any designer could actually uh, do this and that in our view makes it really for everybody you know everybody can join in this industry and the other thing is with lego legos you can build anything right that used to be this commercial of legos well i think that that's that's also the true in this case you know it doesn't really matter what you make with it it could even be cars or it could be ships or whatever but Let's use it for construction first. Um, we have many partners who do this, and those are all available in the App Store, let's say. But I hope that many others will actually join and actually share their knowledge. Because again, if all these people are share and, and companies are sharing their knowledge, we as an industry, we don't have to invest again and again and again. We just collectively become become smarter. So yeah, um, I I guess that this is my final slide. So. Um, I would like to say thank you for this fast pace. That was <laughs> fast pace, uh, Jeroen. I like that. I like the fast pace. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, two questions. How does Packend affect uh, the industry? How is uh, this the, the game changer probably? Yeah. So how does it affect the industry? So, so of course, what we hope is that by, you know, really sharing knowledge, right? Um, and 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 also making money of knowledge, right? Because it's not only about freely sharing. Uh, we really believe that in again, if you know, you we are all in business for for some reason, but um, uh, probably also to survive. Uh, so so by making money uh, in this way, actually, uh, we re we can really change, right? And um, and because the knowledge is then available, um, you know what I said. You don't have to reinvest over and over and over again. Um, and I think building kind of ecosystems of um, yeah of of this knowledge that that is what becomes really important. And yeah. it's not not so strange, right? We're we're already already building supply chains, right? Uh, together, 
The only thing is that we need to make them digital and start collaborating in a digital way. But if I share my knowledge with you, with your, with you, and uh, many people do that, will I lose my job? Yeah, that, that's what a lot of people think. But I think what the interesting thing is that you know there's going to be new jobs, and that's going to be in maintenance of this knowledge and actually the exciting work. Because you know, if you're a structural engineer, and I, actually I'm by one by training. You know, doing concrete calculations over and over again is really boring, right? Yeah. So what you want to do is actually digitize it and then come up with smarter concrete uh, uh, calculations. And I think that's where the real fun is for, for designers, for engineers, architects, property developers, and for everybody in the end. Yeah, so you're giving me back that time. Yeah, I hope that, I, that, I hope that that's the case, that we can do smarter stuff. And in the end, you know, we can make a better world that way, right? It's... Uh, I, I think, you know, again, if we have the best knowledge of everybody, we can get a lot farther than that everybody is reinventing the wheel all the time. Yeah, well, I totally agree with you. Thank you for that, Jeroen, uh, very for that marvelous presentation, and hope to see you soon. Yeah, see you in the Q&A. Yeah, see you in the Q&A. Thank you. Bye-bye.